and the NCDM RPG. There's a ton of reasons why I'm super interested in this game. Let's just get the shallow one out of the way. I like idolize Matt Colville. I want to run a game just like him. Let's be real. If he sold his used toilet paper, I would probably buy it. <laughs> And speaking of used toilet paper, let's talk about how the MCDM role-playing game is just a worse version of 4th edition D&D. <laughs> well, I've gotten to know Matt Colville fans over the last several weeks. And while there are some sane ones, many fall into the category of the person you just saw. Just take a quick look at my comment section on the last video I did on him for proof of that. Matt's core fans would make Jim Jones followers look like Christmas and Easter Catholics. These people get butthurt when you level any kind of criticism against their bearded Buddha. Matt's MCDM RPG has finished its initial crowdfunding at a whopping $4.6 million. 30,000 people put down money on a game that Matt shamelessly hadn't even bothered to name yet. <laughs> Fortunately, we're starting to get a peek of the general direction of the game, and it's going to smell familiar to a lot of gamers out there. Now, you might mistake that whiff for Matt's bathroom after a trip to Golden Corral, but I'm actually talking about the most hated edition of D&D &D ever made. That's right, 4th edition D&D. &D, the game that is the MCDM RPG's spirit animal. This comes as a shock to nobody with an ounce of critical thinking, which of course excludes most of the Matt rats. Colville has said on occasion that he personally loved 4E. Now 4E at its core is a tactical combat war game with traditional aspects of D&D sprinkled on top like Parmesan cheese. Being a bit of a war gamer myself, 4E didn't bother me that much. Uh, I was able to install those more traditional dungeon and wilderness aspects into the game, even though the rules and the support for the game don't really do you any favors in that regard. 4th edition D&D was extremely combat heavy. It was the centerpiece of the game. And to be fair, the MCDM RPG does bill itself as heroic fantasy. It is all about combat, 24-7. <laughs> so in that regard, you'd expect the game has a fine-tuned system that's been in development for years and is really going to shift a few paradigms, right? Nope. He seems to have just copied the basic aspects of 4E and added a few things that seem to make it worse. How do we know this? Well, some sample live play combats are starting to come out now. The YouTube channel Character Sheet on comicbook.com recently had James Introcaso of MCDM on to run an encounter using the MCDM RPG playtest rules. The DNA of 4E is right there from the start. Uh, what you do need is you need a, a grid and a tabletop, which we have, right? We've got a virtual tabletop, but if you were playing at home, that's what you would want. You need a grid. It's not optional. There does not seem to be theater of the mind. They even ported their version of the Warlord class from 4E over, now called the Tactician. And uh, Pete is playing a dwarf tactician. Uh, tactician is a uh, a good warrior, right? Like great with weapons, a weapon master, and they are also good at giving their allies direction in combat, like a 4E warlord almost, right? Taking a look at the draft character sheet of the game, you'll notice some very familiar things if you did play 4th edition. Powers you can use at will, powers you can use once per encounter, triggered powers. This, of course, brings up the same arguments that were made against 4th edition in the first place. For example, the fact that it's obviously trying to mimic a video game. 27 points of damage. There we go. 27 <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> uh, it's another 2d6 plus 6. Nice. Uh-oh. This may be the end, folks. That is 13 points of damage. How do you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but don't worry. Matt's got you, fam. He's going to revolutionize gaming with one key mechanic. Are you ready? You always hit. Yes, in this game, your character never misses an attack in combat. Now, why did they do this? The roll to hit. Uh... 
we don't have anymore. When you make an attack against somebody, you you roll damage. That is gets rid of the roll to hit, which is basically a roll to see if you have a turn. Right? Yeah. That like, if I roll a one on my turn, I'm just not doing anything. That's not fun. Um, and so, and it doesn't feel heroic. But if you want to feel like a hero, you should be doing something effective every round. Harrison proclaimed on Instagram that he will always encourage his boys, but the trophies, quote, will be given back until they earn a real trophy. All right, so let's be clear here. I don't have a problem with radically different mechanics in general. That's how you get progress. I'm sort of lukewarm on dice pool systems in general, but I do see their inherent value for certain games. We never get progress if we aren't afraid to shake things up a little bit. But as you could tell from that clip, I believe the reason for this hit all the time mechanic is just fundamentally flawed. Let's talk about the metagame aspects of this first. It's there to placate a population who needs shiny things to entertain them every waking moment. A generation addicted to the incremental dopamine hit, the participation trophy generation. And I fully support getting rid of misses and making your turn actually matter. I think, I think waiting like 20 minutes for your turn, just being bored out of your mind and then just rolling the d20 and missing and that's your turn, that sucks. So I think it's a really good way of addressing people just zoning out, maybe buying health insurance in the middle of a session. Not that I've ever done that before because RPG combat's really boring. <laughs> If you're in a game where you're waiting 20 minutes in between combat rounds consistently, you probably need a new DM. That should not be happening. But ironically enough, with the very tactical nature of this game and the sussing out of player and villain powers each round, the MCDM RPG figures to be no better as far as saving time in combat than any other fantasy RPG out there. They just got rid of that seven second dice roll and sold you a cheap, game-altering gimmick, as well as adding a slew of powers that are gonna take even longer to analyze and implement each round. Almost more insidious is the blatant selfishness implied here. I don't wanna wait. <laughs> it implies that you have absolutely no interest in what's happening to your fellow PCs, or the game in general. The adventurer you've been traveling with for Two years in game time, just got his skull split open. Oh, uh, sorry, I missed that. I was just buying renter's insurance for my one-room, roach-infested hovel. It shows the cynical, me, me, me nature of many fans who came in during the boom of 5e. And now people are starting to cater their games around those people's narcissism. Good for profits, bad for gaming, horrible for society. To paraphrase The Incredibles, if everyone hits, does anyone really hit? This rule deprives the player of any responsibility for a missed attack. One missed attack in my Birthright campaign altered the entire game world. It still lives on today as a great and tragic moment. What if your PC was the one that missed an attack roll that allowed a villain to kill a fellow PC? They'd have a lot of juicy guilt to live with, wouldn't they? Conversely, what if they were the one to roll a perfect 20 against the Lich Lord that had your entire party on the ropes? This wouldn't happen in the MCDM RPG. You'd be dutifully rolling damage and like a cup filling up with water, you'd simply note when you reach the top. How boring. From the sample combat, and by the way, I'll put a link to that sample combat in the description of this video, you can see this effect. Encounters seem utterly devoid of character, and seemed to me rather boring and dry. Many of the 4E style powers were shown are there to mitigate the damage an opponent does to you, which seemed a tad clumsy and deflating. It resulted in a lot of, you know, the villain does, you know, X number points of damage to you. Oh, wait, uh, actually, he now you're out of the range. So yep. the initial damage is 13, yep. which you would have to six, right? So Round down. Correct. Okay. Uh, and that reduces it by five more points. Nice. So you're only taking one point of damage then. Very nice. Um, yeah. So you can start to see how 
you all are hitting all the time and dealing damage, right? But you also have ways to mitigate damage against you, which helps you survive the adventuring day and feel heroic, right? Uh, rather than a pulse pounding struggle for survival, kind of had the grim demeanor of a tutorial chess match against your eight-year-old nephew. There are other things too that I don't like. Things called recoveries, which wash away most of the damage done to your character. Oh no, you know what? I'm going to use my action to do recovery and get 20 hit points back because I was looking a little rough. This puts me to 16 down instead of uh, 36 down. I remember a lot of that kind of stuff from fourth edition with second wins and the like. There's going to be a lot of stuff to remember if you GM this game. In 4e, combat's got out of control as far as complexity at high levels. And I can see the same happening here. And I got news for those of you drinking the Colville Kool-Aid. You aren't saving that much time by eliminating dice rolls for each player's attacks. And by the way, a quick time-saving DM tip here. Have your players roll their damage with their attack roll all the time. Obviously, you just ignore it when they don't hit. Look, Matt is, if anything else, a pretty shrewd businessman. Uh, even if he had demonstrated this system before the crowdfund, it still would have been successful, of course. Uh, however, the fact that this is just the warmed-over corpse of 4E would have caused a lot of fence-sitters out there who did back it to maybe wait it out and see. So I guess props to him for being an effective snake oil salesman and working his hardcore fans like the marks that they are. To me, it's all just so odd because Pathfinder 2nd Edition already seems to be a 4E clone in some ways. So you can already scratch this itch with a currently in-print system that is well-supported. Without the participation trophy rule, of course, which even the hacks at Paizo haven't brought themselves to incorporate yet. But in the end, Matt gets to put out his dream system, which will be supported by a very loud, but in the end, small minority of gamers. I don't think this is going to be the D&D killer everybody thought it would be, even with the success of the crowdfund. Enthusiasm will also wane as the next iteration of D&D comes out this year, while we're looking at probably two years for book fulfillment for the MCDM RPG. That's assuming they name it, of course. <laughs> it should be an interesting next couple of years, though. Well, I'm sure the Matt Rats will tell me what they think of this video. Thanks ahead of time for all that free engagement, boys. But what do you, the normal and smart people, think of the way this game is shaping up? What do you think of the hit-all-the-time mechanic? Is it a cheap ploy to garner attention while destroying the underlying fabric of what an RPG is supposed to be? Or is it a breath of fresh air? Uh, let me know in the comments below, won't you? So if you like the cut of my jib, don't be bashful. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you get that alarm bell too for notifications. If you really like what you see, you can always join the channel. That's always appreciated. The link is in the description below. Remember to join us every Wednesday for The Lair. That's our weekly live stream where me and a few buddies of mine uh, talk about RPGs, pop culture, life, lot of other stuff too. It's always a great time. Please join us. We would love to see you there. All right, you guys take care and have a great, great rest of your day. Goodbye. Fred Forge makes two great games that aren't afraid to poke a little fun at the people who, quite frankly, need a little fun poked at them. <laughs> First is the quick and hilarious Virtue Signal, the game where you play a social justice warrior trying to attract followers to your cause before the other players can tear you down. Then there's the mammoth Portland Occupied Zone, or POZ. In this strategy game, you play as a complete disaster of a human being, trying to reshape Portland into a slacker Marxist utopia. Bring a few friends and warm up that throwing arm for some Molotov cocktails.
Go get him, Gladys. 